Hello, welcome, thank you for joining me. This is our third video in our series on geometric uh, dimension intolerancing. What I'd like to show you in this video is our simple model that we put together. We have a block with a hole in it, and we have a cylindrical pin that goes inside of that hole. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, what we need to do in order to get that pin to go inside of that hole. It's very simple just to take our, our pin and put a, a simple dimension on it, like we have here of a uh, 0.625 at its maximum of 0 0.620 in regard to that limit dimension uh, for its minimum and we could do the same thing to our block too we put a uh, very simple dimension in here and uh, and right now it's uh, allowed to be 5 eighths of an inch or 0.625 but it can be as large as 0 0.630 so the hole can be at the the basic dimension size 5 eighths of an inch or a little bit larger and the pin itself can be at the, the basic dimension, 5 eighths of an inch, 0.625, or a little bit smaller. And if you have those concepts in there, and if you uh, manufacture these things, they should be, no matter what bin, pin you pick out, no matter what block you pick out, that the pin should be able to fit inside of the block, conceivably, in a perfect universe. But sometimes it isn't perfect. Well, let's take a look at that. What I've done with these pins in the block is i created two different uh, conditions in here. I've created a least material and a most material condition. Now let's just talk about that uh, real briefly, briefly that uh, concept. And I want you to understand this because it will be a test question. Um, the least material condition means that uh, within uh, the, the dimensions that we have in here and how the blocks are going to be built or the pin, the least material condition uh, within uh, the variations that we have and the only vari variations we have with our block is with our hole here. The least material condition would mean that we would have a hole of 0 0.630. So when the hole is at its maximum, the material is going to be at, at its minimum. Same thing with the pin, or something very similar with the pin. The least material condition is going to mean that the pin is going to be at its minimum. The diameter of that uh, of uh, the feature, or the dimension that defines the diameter of this feature, is going to be at its minimum. So instead of the basic dimension, now it's going to be at the small end of that, which is going to be 0.620. So that's our least material condition. I created a configuration for both of the parts, and I also created a configuration for the assembly. So if I were to put these together and go normal to that surface, you will see the least material condition for the pin and the least material condition for the block provides the maximum spacing between those two. If I were to go to the most material condition and take a look at that, you notice that we almost have an interference fit. Oh, there's a little bit of gap there, but it's only because SolidWorks kind of chops up the model a little bit. It doesn't give us a perfectly <coughs> uh, circular line or edge when we ask for it. It does break that up in order to free up uh, computer resources. But if we were to go to a section view and take a look at that, you'll notice that uh, there really is no gap between the two elements. If we go to the least material condition now, you will see that there is a gap in there. So that kind of defines it. When you have the most material condition, just to put this in a nutshell, when you have a most material condition, the parts are at their maximum. Uh, typically when you're talking about a pin and a hole, you're going to have the greatest chance for interference. At the least material condition, you're going to have a chance, or the, the most chance for the, the most clearance uh, between those two elements, between the pin and the hole. So let me pose this to you, and we'll cover this in the next video. Let me propose this to you. What if we had a situation where even in a cross section in here in this pin, it still has that dimensional tolerance on it of uh, points, uh, 0.620. Well, that's because of the least material condition. Let's go to most material condition, take a look at that. So that's our basic dimension here, 0 0.625 down to a minimum of 0 0.620. Uh, let's say that uh, each one of these cross sections, uh, as we go through this and cross section our pin as we're going up, still maintains that uh, that dimensional tolerance. We can measure going all the way up there and we'd say, yep, that's things within tolerance, but what if it wasn't perfectly cylindrical? And if you think about the concept of maybe having a slinky, where you can keep the top of the slinky and the bottom of the slinky parallel to each other and kind of shift it, you'll see that it goes from something that would be somewhat, uh, you know, virtually uh, perfectly cylindrical to something it's not. It's kind of skewed off to the side if you th think about that slinky example. And so what happens if we have a situation like that where our pin is not perfectly cylindrical or the hole that pin goes into is not perfectly cylindrical it still may, may 
it still may meet the requirements of our dimension that defines that but we need something else and that's where the future control frames come in and I'll explain that in the next video